Thanks for clicking on this video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon and turn on all notifications to keep up to date with the latest information and discussions. Mama just tanked a guy. Hey guys, Marzico X here. After the absolutely thrilling conclusion to the last part in this entry, I don't think it would be right to leave you guys hanging for too long, like I have done recently. So with the initial hype of Dragon Ball Super Broly finally making its way to homes across the US and the rest of the world eventually, Gine's time in the consciousness of the Dragon Ball community has now reached a whole other level. The idea that her and Bardock sent off little Kakarot for a chance at a better life may have not been well received in Dragon Ball Minus circa 2014, but with the implementation that was used in the Broly movie, well, that's a different story. It has managed to fix some of the concerns that the comic special had, namely having the actual time to use the art of anime to explain things the short 20-page comic tended to skimp on. Speaking of anime, today's sponsor for this video is Crunchyroll. With my special link in the description, you can get a free 14-day Crunchyroll premium trial to see whether you like unlimited anime, manga, and drama titles. And my guess is that you probably do. By going to crunchyroll.com forward slash Masako and signing up, you'll get the latest content from Japan as soon as one hour after it's aired in Japan. Oh, the wonders of simulcasting. That's including the likes of the latest season of One Punch Man, the new Fruits Basket adaptation, and of course, our beloved Dragon Ball Super. All 1080p content and accessible on most modern games console streaming platforms such as Roku and Apple TV and Chromecast, using the iOS and Android apps by the way, they're there too. I myself have very much been enjoying the latest series of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which is also available on Crunchyroll. Leave a comment down below about which series that you're watching right now. So go to crunchyroll.com slash M-A-S-A-K-O or click the link in the description and get your 14-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium now. Thank you. Now, back to the what if. So long story short, Gine escaped with Kakarot, who had heeded the warnings of Bardock regarding Frieza's impending arrival, if you haven't caught up. She then fled to Earth with her son and managed to have a pretty normal life on Earth throughout the childhood years of her son Kakarot. And by the way, he was never called Goku because there was no need. His name was known as was his Saiyan heritage. However, King Piccolo came by and spoiled that fun and then revealed to Gine that she was stronger than she first thought. And from there, she and her son led the Z fighters all the way to the latest part. And regarding that last part, the thought of her son being defeated by Frieza was too much for her to bear, and her maternal instincts burst forth, with her becoming the first Super Saiyan in over 1,000 years. And it wasn't Kakarot, nor was it Vegeta. It was her. One who was once described as a weakling. A former Saiyan soldier turned cook, she had unlocked the power of Super Saiyan and was giving final form Frieza a run for his money. But alas, it's not going to be as easy as that. She's going to wish that she knew Kaioken. So, Frieza, having been whomped by this monkey girl, again, has boosted up to half his full power, which he believes will be enough to stop this annoying pest. And for the first time in this battle, he's actually right. Gine's Super Saiyan power may be pretty impressive at 37.5 million, but the power of Frieza at half his full power is 60 million, remember? It's not double, but Gine's going to be on the back foot pretty hard during this part of the tussle. But for most of the fight, Gine in her Super Saiyan guise is uncontrollable and incredibly silent, save for the primal grunt and shout as she unpredictably moves around. And that is exactly what saves her in this initial section of this part of the fight. This wild fighting style catches Frieza off guard, and even at half of his full power, it's not enough to stop him from being pounded on for the first few comings together. So Gine at the moment is pretty lucky. However, he soon gets the handle on Gine and calms down for once. He's sure that he will reign supreme. What's to worry about? The other monkey seemingly can't go Super Saiyan, and if this beast is his mother, then he's going to enjoy asserting his dominance. The tables turn hard, with Gine aiming a direct punch at Frieza's face, but he blocks it with ease and slowly twists her fist before snapping it around 180 degrees, snapping her wrist, all without breaking eye contact. Gine lets out a scream of abject agony. With barely any pause in proceedings, Frieza just flicks his tail and slaps Gine across the face and into a nearby pile of rubble. And Kakarot, understandably, I think you'd be too, 
He's horrified at Frieza's callous nature and wants to help. He rushes over to Gine, but is then bashed back by the rampaging Super Saiyan, as if to say that she's not done yet. Kakarot looks to Frieza, who shrugs. I'm not the one telling you to stand aside, monkey. <laughs> it seems like your mother is not done fighting your battles for you. Why would I wish to deny her that opportunity? It seems like she's enjoying it also. Sure enough, Gine's mouth is curled into a sinister smirk. Her sane instincts are coursing through her veins, more than ever supercharged by the power of Super Saiyan. Had her fears all come true finally? Had she truly lost all sense of herself? Not quite. She still cared for Kakarot and still wished to fight for her son, but not in the way that she would have done normally or naturally. It's totally not like Gine. She leaps forward and begins another barrage of strikes, which initially surprises Frieza, but not for long. This goes on for what seems like ages. Frieza seemingly enjoying being the top dog at the moment. Gine now is looking pretty ragged and is beginning to tire, but she's constantly fighting in there, trying to drag this fight out as much as possible. Kakarot really wants to step in badly or give her a sensu bean, but he's all out of them. There's nothing he can do. Frieza stands up straight and looks weary. I'm satisfied now. Gine grunts as if to say, what? I now know for sure that all of these jabs that you got on me before were utter flukes. You got lucky. You should be proud though, monkey. Not one other being other than my father has seen me perform in this form. And I seriously hope to keep it that way. Goodbye, Gine-san. Only now when he's about to finish the job does he actually mention her name. And it's so galling, as if to admit that you lost, monkey. He launches one of his trademark finger beams. And Gine, instead of trying to dodge, launches herself straight at Freezer. Landing a punch on his smug face, but she's still struck by the beam. I guess not dodging just skipped a generation. Gine was struck straight in the chest, almost immediately taking her out of the Super Saiyan form. Her fist slowly sliding down Frieza's face before she collapses on the ground, motionless. Kakarot is also left motionless, tears streaming down his face. Is his mother gone? Frieza chuckles to himself and then turns to Kakarot, being absolutely smug. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Was that too much for you to bear? I didn't mean to. I mean, she was coming right for me and I had to defend myself. <laughs> and I think you know where this is going. Kakarot is sparking. He too is about to ascend to the power of Super Saiyan. And since his power is 3.2 million as opposed to Gine's 750,000 in their base forms, <gasps> He lets out a primal roar at the loss of his mother right before him. Kakarot is now also a Super Saiyan. Frieza, though, cannot sense energy nor the power difference between the two. Remember, so he's assuming that this Saiyan's power is identical to that of his foolish mother's. So with Kakarot's power right now, with the multiplier, it's 160 million. And if you've done your maths on your research, you know where this is going to go. So without even flinching, Kakarot calls out to Krillin and Gohan to take Gine's body and just get out of there. There may be a chance that she's still alive. Krillin and Gohan don't want to get right up close to Frieza, but Kakarot has no patience for this right now and just screams the order again to them. And they then decide to make their way towards Frieza like a bunch of loons who then spots them as if they were annoying flies, which effectively they are. Ah, 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 no you don't. You're not taking away my trophy. He was about to point his finger at them, but he realized he had no longer control of his hands or his fingers. So without spotting it, Kakarot had gotten around the back of Frieza and got him in a full Nelson, slowly beginning to squeeze harder and harder. Frieza is beginning to feel the pain as the grip increases in tightness. He's too distracted though to notice Krillin slipping in underneath whimpering as he does, and scoops up Gine's body before turning tail and running like heck out of there. Frieza is writhing in pain and cannot break free due to the overwhelming difference in power. And not to mention the fact that he had used a little bit of his stamina with the fight with Gine, her dragging her out as soon as possible. This was part of the plan. A thing that we all know too well of Dragon Ball Z Frieza, he does tend to act rashly, doesn't he? Kakarot is growling with anger, but is more cool than his mother, having more martial arts discipline 
Plus, the desire to get even is keeping him going and keeping him sane. You've had your fun, Freezer. Now you will pay for what you did. I'm going to make sure that you never hurt anybody else ever again. The Saiyans you fought so hard to erase will instead erase you. Frieza then uses all his strength and stomps on Goku's foot, which allows him to break loose, but the power difference is still pretty amazing. Not bad, monkey, but you got lucky. I've seen what you Super Saiyans are all about, and I have to be honest, it's not all that special. I don't know why I was so frightened by this so-called legend back in the day. Kakarot decides to answer Frieza by appearing right behind Frieza again and ground pounding him so hard that it causes a 50 foot crater in the ground. It's massive! In fact, Krillin barely escapes the impending ground coming before him. But when Frieza comes to, he doesn't find himself in the ground, he finds himself in outer space. Wait, what? How, how did he get there? Well, it turns out Kakarot had spun him around and around so fast that he launched the tyrant into orbit! Okay, but why would Kakarot do this? Well, he'd think that Frieza would just asphyxiate up there because space is a vacuum. No such luck. Frieza is angry and he uses this moment to power up to full power and promptly charges back into the fight. Why isn't he blowing up the planet now? He is way too obsessed fighting Kakarot right now. He's beginning to enjoy this. And not to mention that he's surprised and really keen to prove this Saiyan wrong before wiping out this world. By doing that, it would mean that nobody would even dare to utter about this humiliation because no one's going to be around. Kakarot is looking up to the sky and can sense that Frieza is still alive up there. And so he turns to the others and tells them to get to the ship and take as many Namekians with them as they can. Kakarot then communicates with King Kai and tells him to tell Kami to wish him back with the Dragon Balls in case they need them. Kami then complies with this request. With the rest of the gang on the ship and heading away from the planet with as many Namekians as they can carry, Kakarot is left all alone, with Frieza speeding right towards him. Yep, this power is higher because Frieza at his full power but still not strong enough and it's reducing rapidly. The battle continues with Frieza and Kakarot duking it out and sure enough, Frieza is beginning to tucker out. Unlike the original, Frieza has no chance now against Kakarot throughout the entire battle. Gine had done her job of taking the edge off Frieza, and her son was basically finishing the job that she'd started. So, in a way, I guess, Gine got the assist. Frieza and Kakarot stare each other down and prepare for an ultimate beam struggle. Kakarot's Kamehameha versus the Frieza world-ending ball. The struggle is fierce but Frieza's decreasing energy supplies are beginning to show themselves more and more. He's giving his all, while Kakarot right now, from what he can tell, is relatively coasting. Kakarot then shouts, This is for everyone that you massacred! Ah! Frieza can't answer to this and is promptly vaporized in the rush of blue energy that surrounds him. Frieza is gone. And with that, Kakarot falls out of Super Saiyan and collapses to the ground, breathing heavily. He can no longer sense Frieza's power. It's done. But now, how's he gonna get home? And is his mother still alive? He doesn't know, because they're long gone. With the Namekians safe, Elder Mori, who had chosen to stay on the planet just to keep the Dragon Balls safe, thanks Kakarot for saving them, but the Saiyan is not much for talking right now. As far as he's aware, he might have lost his mother. However, he is grateful for their help with the Dragon Balls, and the Namekian offers their services again, should Earth need it, as a mark of respect. Kakarot then, like in the original, checks to see if there is any kind of transportation, some kind of pod that can take him home. He then stumbles across Frieza's ship, and eventually finds the same pod that took him to Yardrat in the original, which also takes him there without him realizing it. He is too tired right now. He just punches in a random code, thinking it'll take him to Earth or something like that, but it's not going to. Now before we end, I'd like to once again thank today's sponsor, Crunchyroll. By going to crunchyroll.com slash M-A-S-A-K-O, you can try Crunchyroll Premium for 14 days and experience unlimited anime, manga, and dramas on your computer, games console, or smart device. All in HD and fresh from Japan. So give it a try because Masako says anime is good for you. So what do you guys think? Did Gine do her best? Will she survive the attack? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later.